We talked in our previous discussion about the kind of additional medical diagnosis that people who have real-world accidents, real-world car wrecks, falls, need relative to what um, athletes are getting. There is another significant problem in the way in which concussion is evaluated because of the athlete model. Now, it's very fortunate for us that the CDC is now taking the sport and concussion concepts that are in that were developed for sideline concussion analysis and now turning that into um, information that's being published in general for all doctors. Almost all medical research around concussion has been done within the sport and concussion setting. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is that it is predictable that athletes are going to have concussion. It's witnessable. It's videotapable, and it's so predictable that they actually test athletes before the concussion so that they have this baseline of their function so they can tell if there's other injury. So tremendous amount of research on concussions being done on athletes. And it's a good research, and it's very helpful research. But the problem with that research is we are studying the people who are the least likely to have permanent injury. Football players in their 20s are going to recover from concussion. You have to go way beyond the kind of concussion that will disable the kind of people that I represent before an athlete's going to be disabled by concussion unless, and this is fairly significant, you're talking about a 30-something quarterback. If you look at who has become disabled because of concussion, you will find that in virtually every single case that comes to mind, at least in terms of football, it is a quarterback who's in their 30s. Occasionally, a foot, you know, occasionally you may find another athlete, football um, linebackers. That um, I know there's a couple of linebackers who've made headlines. Um, there are some running backs who've made headlines, but primarily you're talking about quarterbacks and quarterbacks over 30. It's the age issue that's significant, and it's also significant because of the repeated exposure to concussion. If you played an NFL quarterback for you know 10 or 15 years, you've had a fair number of potentially concussive events. Each one of those potentially concussive events adds up to something. But there's another factor as well. Most of the clients that we represent are women. Most of the clients we represent are women that are, if they're not 40, they're close to it. Um, I would say 80% of my clients in the last 10 years have been women between 37 and 50. Women are more vulnerable to brain injury than men. Their bodies are not as resistant to the force. Um, and I think there's a difference in the way in which they process information pre-injury that also has an impact. Because women are more vulnerable, because older people are more vulnerable, the the rules of engagement, so to speak, with respect to diagnosing concussion in young athletes do not apply. There is a high likelihood that an event that would not leave an athlete out of the game for more than 15 minutes will result in significant disability in a 40-something female. What we know from studying athletes is the athlete who is more symptomatic at 24 hours is not allowed to go back in the game. What I know from my experience and what the people who work in this field um, know subjectively is that if someone is symptomatic at 24 hours, those are the people who are likely not to get the full recovery. There's a much greater likelihood of a permanent problems from concussion if you're confused at 24 hours. If you're significant at 24 hours, and you're female, and you're over 40, you need to go see the doctor every couple of days until you get better. And you need to have a doctor who's going to test your memory, not just of things that you knew your life, but of things that you've been doing in the 24 hours before you saw them. You need a doctor who is not just going to ask you about your memory, ask you about the symptoms, but ask the people you live with about those symptoms. That is absolutely critical. It must be done. 
if you don't get that type of diagnosis, we will have no real way of predicting whether or not this concussion that you suffered is going to result in a, in a few bad weeks, a few bad months, or will keep you disabled the rest of your life.